Terracotta te fara o aqua deuterit, Terracotta na madhiri. No mai, hire mai, hire mai ki te de fara karakia, a te ato, Terracotta te de tato katoa. We welcome you into this circle of community. Welcome into this space made sacred by Auckland Unitarians for 116 years. We are here because there is too much beauty in the wor this world to give up on it. Yet, and it is always too soon to surrender to cynicism. Bring your doubt, your skepticism, your downright confusion even your bitterness, but in the midst of all these, in the center, wrap your tender fingers around that still bright thread of hope. Feel in your heart that still steady hunger for something more, the vision we glimpse every day in the rising sun across the foothills, the light that spreads across the face of the one we love the look of knowing all there is to know and still loving life, loving us, just as it is, just as we are. For this hour, we come to celebrate, to praise, to give thanks, to refuse to give up, to steady ourselves, keepers of hope, brave builders of this still possible world. Come, let us worship together. At one point in her novel, Fly Away Home, American writer Marge Piercy has a mother say, to her uh, say of her daughters, the girls had been raised Unitarian, which seemed a nice sensible compromise between having no religion at all and having to lie about what we believed. Enough religion to be respectable, but not enough to get in the way. Ouch. That hurts. It hurts if you're proud to be a Unitarian and strive to be serious about your own religious life. But whether we like it or not, this is precisely what many people from other faith groups think of us, if they think of us at all. Remember the old jokes? What is Unitarian? A way station between Methodism and the golf course? What do you get when you cross a Jehovah's Witness with a Unitarian? Someone who knocks at your door for no particular reason. One old down east Maine fisherman asks another, Unitarianism, what's that? To which the other draws back, well, best I can figure it, that's someone who has no principles and lives by them. <laughs> Charles Magistro speaks to this point. I'm amused by the view that it's easy to be a Unitarian. It is, easy to be a uni it is as easy to be a Unitarian as it is to search the murky waters of life without sure charts to guide us or any guarantee that we will find a safe port in which to put down anchor. It's as easy to be a Unitarian as it is to overcome the natural fear of the unknown and venture forth with nothing to sustain us save our zest for living and our hunger for new experience and new knowledge. Our way in religion is not the way of ease. We're called to be sailors. For many worlds exist waiting to be discovered and not the least of them are within ourselves. It takes much persistence, courage, and curiosity to look into our own depths, to come to terms with the twin mysteries of being alive and having to die, to see ourselves in new and larger ways without being dishonest about our limitations. We have only begun to discover our potential. Unitarianism does not give you freedom from religion. It gives you freedom for religion. Here is the great paradox of our faith. Being, being a UU does not give you freedom to believe anything you want. 
It gives you rather the freedom to search for and find those beliefs from which your heart and soul cannot escape. With humility and courage born of our history, we're called as Unitarians to build the beloved community where all souls are welcome as blessings and the human family lives whole and reconciled. With this vision in our hearts and minds, we light our channel. Today's topic, does New Zealand need Unitarianism? Well, I suppose it depends on who you ask. When this church opened, all the clergy in Auckland were invited to our opening service. None came. The only good thing about that is at least they knew who we were and agreed with the graffiti painted on the outside of the building the night before the service. This is the house of the devil. It is safe to say they definitely did not think New Zealand needed Unitarianism. Our relationship improved with Christian clergy over the years, but I think that is because most don't know that for 67 years we have not considered ourselves a Christian denomination not even a heretical one. I would wager that most have no idea who we are or for what we stand. So their answer now might be a shrug of the shoulders. There aren't enough of them to be bothered, they say. In a way, I can't blame them. When, the, when this church was built in 1901, there were enough Unitarians to be worthy of being counted in the census. Throughout New Zealand, there were 468 of us, and many, if not most, belonged to this congregation. By 1960, during the First World War, Unitarians numbered 1,468, grew by 1,000. This congregation was large enough to field an all-city champion hockey team. Many of their names are on that plaque of remembrance of World War veterans under the banner displaying our seven principles. Those who did not return are noted. While I haven't succeeded in navigating Stats New Zealand's website to find census data after that census that counted Unitarians, I suspect 1916 was our zenith numerically in New Zealand or at least near it. World War I and the flu pandemic that killed over 5,500 New Zealanders in 1918 dampened the enthusiasm for an optimistic, optimistic and positive view of God and humanity. Eventually, our numbers declined to a point of not being noted in the census, included only in the category of other. Today, few Unitarians can be found beyond Auckland. There are congregations in Christ Church, Wellington, and Blenheim, but they are quite small and meet only once or twice a month. Looking more broadly to include Australia, we in Adelaide are the largest congregations, both of similar size. Adelaide is the only other congregation to have a minister. Most other congregations in Oz are small. In fact, there are only 450 identified Unitarians in all of Australia and New Zealand. So apparently most Kiwis and Aussies would shrug their shoulders with the clergy as to whether or not Unitarianism is needed, knowing little or nothing about it. Our decline is not unique. In 1900, when the British Unitarians sent us William Jelly to be our first minister, there were over 50,000 Unitarians in the UK. Today, there are 3,600 spread thinly over 173 congregations. 
there is a bright spot for Unitarianism in the U.S. where the, the denomination is growing. The Unitarian Universalist Association grew nearly 16% between 2000 and 2008. Sounds good until you realize there are only 586,000 you use in a population of over 326 million. It is possible in the age of Trump that numbers will continue to grow for as a denomination it is vigorously resisting his policies and violate all of our principles. <laughs> but over half of all Unitarians are over 50 years of age and the number of younger members is shrinking. The other demographic of concern is that UU congregations are predominantly white, while people of color will soon be the majority of Americans. In spite of Unitarianism having played a significant role in its histories, most Americans would join those who shrug their shoulders in New Zealand. What raised this question for me was a recent study on faith and belief in New Zealand commissioned by the Wilberforce Foundation. After reading it, my first question was, does New Zealand need religion at all? According to the report, a surprising few think so. From the founding of New Zealand as a British colony, Pākehā were Christian, generally Anglican, Catholic, Wesleyan, or Presbyterian. But a lot has changed. Today, only one in three identify with a religious or spiritual belief. Only one in five identify with a spiritual belief, but not with any of our founding denominations. In other words, we have become a secular nation with 43% preferring a scientific or rational approach to life. Many of that 43% think religion is a superstition or irrelevant or a crutch for the uneducated. While of those who do identify with the denomination, only three in five are active in practicing their religion, and only one in nine attend their religious choice regularly. That explains why you can find a parking place in Ponsonby on Sundays. <laughs> this study was done on behalf of Christian denominations. What they learned, those of us in the coalface have known for most of my 35 years in ministry, faith-based organizations are in decline. Many books have been written as to why, and many a, and many a consultant, do I dare say charlatans, has convinced churches they know how to turn it around. But let me give you a recent experience. A woman I have known and mentored since coming to New Zealand was ordained a priest a week ago at Holy Trinity Cathedral. Rachel and I went. It was a moment of closure for me. I had not been to an Anglican service since coming here as your minister. It was strange for me to receive communion for the first time in four years. It also took me back to 1982, when I was ordained. The vows those to be ordained had to make, I could not make now with integrity, especially those accepting the authority of the bishops. The world had moved on, or at least I had. While the pageantry and ritual meant something to me, I had to give live commentary to Rachel, who had not grown up in any religion. Unitarianism is her first true venture into an organized religion. None of the ceremony meant much to her, if anything. She was there because it was important to me, and I promised her a nice dinner out <laughs> afterward. <laughs> Unless someone is part of a club, traditional religious worship has become less than transformative. I found it sad for the three being ordained that the cathedral was only a third full, uh, with only a token number of clergy present. For my friend, only a handful from her congregation were present. From that, I guess, 
only a handful of Kiwis, even those who still identify with a denomination, think religion is all that necessary for New Zealand. It is just part of the culture they grew up with or still feel connected to, but would feel hard pressed to explain why. I fervently don't want this congregation to share that indifference. When the younger generations are asked to why they have no interest in religion, it is for two primary reasons, according to the Wilberforce report. The first is the perceived homophobia of Christian churches. We actually tick that box. We are still the only denomination that fully accepts, includes, and supports the rainbow community. Well, there are many in Christian denominations that share our views. The denominations themselves have not yet fully taken a stand. Those who don't share our views definitely don't think New Zealand needs Unitarianism. The second reason the younger generation eschews religion is in not seeing the religious living out their values. What they all too often see is hypocrisy. But Unitarians have often been on the right side of history. Not always, but usually. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. He was summarizing prominent Unitarian minister Theodore Parker, who vocally opposed slavery and was part of the Underground Railroad freed slaves. Parker remains our touchstone. It is not good enough to say the right things if we do not do the right things, even at our peril. As Anno reminded us, and it was not long ago we were asked to, as a congregation to give sanctuary to Indian students who were being threatened with deportation because their agents of the private schools that they furnished with students had been sent fraudulent documents to immigration New Zealand. It wasn't an easy decision for us, but after much lively Unitarian debate, we provided sanctuary when no other church would. Eventually, it seemed we failed to protect them. They were deported. However, recently the Ombudsman report came out. It said Immigration New Zealand had the legal right to deport the students. But remember, it was once legal to have slaves. Determining what is legal is the prerogative of the powerful. The Ombudsman went on to say that Immigration New Zealand should not presume defects in the character of students without further investigation based on the actions of their agents in India. He also encouraged the reevaluation of over 200 Indian students who may be in violation of their visas. Before the report, our giving sanctuary also resulted in the closing of some of the schools that had exploited these students. It is my hope that eventually all of the students will be allowed to return and have their deportation expunged, for all of them have paid a huge price for standing up to injustice. At the moment, four of them have that possibility. For that, I rejoice. I dare, dare say that the students we gave sanctuary and have continued to support and advocate for to the best of our ability, would say New Zealand needs Unitarianism. This is just one of the ways we walk or talk. Immigration New Zealand may not think New Zealand needs Unitarianism, but if you are a dyslexic child in Tonga or Samoa, working for less than a living wage, a rough sleeper, but able to find something to eat, to eat outside our doors, standing up for environmental justice, 
a same-sex couple looking for a church that will marry them, a child at a first decile school who now has books in his home, then you might disagree. New Zealand needs Unitarianism. Well, as I said at the beginning, it depends on who you ask. So now I want to ask you, does Unitarian, New Zealand need Unitarianism? So I invite you to find a couple of three or four around you and give your answers or your reservations or your alternatives. So take a moment to mess up the chairs and talk to each other. fun exploring that and you can carry on at morning tea. Let's start over. One snowflake is a marvel, a miracle. Four snowflakes, five, and the kids begin to run around in the yard. One hundred and the car starts slowing down. One thousand, two, you, you can see where this is going. We are strengthened in coming together, joining with others, blending our efforts with Unitarians in the next town or the next country. Together, we are more than we could ever be alone. 
one congregation, one Unitarian, is a miracle, a marvel. Together, we can help to create a wonderland, a world blanketed with love and justice, understanding and hope.